any of us would like to do than to get this thing done. And I would personally like to see it done before I-5 bridge is even finished with their design. I agree. Uh, and I think they're, the schedule that they keep promoting isn't realistic anyway, but right. that, that's just my humble opinion. Uh, but I appreciate that. And I want you to know I'm here to help you in any way that I can. Uh, we, we, we all have spent a lot of time already on this bridge. Uh, and the longer we wait, the more it's going to cost. Uh, and the longer we wait, the, the more chances we have of something going south. Uh, we just need to stay on it and get it done. And, and I just want you to know I'm here to help you. We'll get together. We'll do whatever we can do. But uh, uh, we, there's, there is no way in God's green earth that this should take us till 2028 even to get this bridge built. So. Let me know where I can help you. Guaranteed, we're going to be calling you and All right. coming up to visit with you. Well, I so. appreciate that. I'll come down and visit you. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, it's a great district, and uh, uh, be glad to do that. I, I need to do that anyway because there's a couple of mayors here that I need to meet with that we've been trying to do that for a little while. So, uh, I, I appreciate again everything you do. Just let me know where I can help. And, and that's really the only reason I got on here was to encourage you to, to just keep pushing forward and let me know what we can do. I've, I've talked with Dan Newhouse's office, even though it isn't his district, I made him aware of it. I've had two conversations with uh, Raquel Crowley, uh, Governor Murray or uh, Senator Murray's office, pushed, the, pushed this uh, bridge in talking with her. And uh, I need to talk to Jamie Herrera next um, and we'll keep working on that. But let me know where I can help. Thank you again for all your efforts. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stay on because you guys can do your business without me. And again, appreciate all you can do and let me know where I can help. Well, we very much appreciate you too. So thank you so much. Pleasure is mine. Okay. Have a good meeting. Thank you. All right, Kevin, can you bring up the, the agenda? Yes, and the next item is the are the minutes. Yeah, so um, is there any comments on the minutes from uh, any of the members? If not, uh, can I see a, a consensus that uh, we can approve the minutes? Thumbs up, one, two, three. Marla, good, four, so we're good. Catherine can't make it today. Uh, how about Arthur? You're standing in for for uh, Bob. I can't see you. He's good. He's okay. I, I mean, I have my thing, my thumb up there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the meetings are good. Um, so on to the next issue, which is uh, very apropos. There's a a trip planned out to D.C. to uh, walk the halls um, and uh, uh, seek money, educate folks um, about our project. And, and uh, we're in the process of developing a grant application for 195 million, Kevin? Yep, that's, uh, I did uh, alert uh, Hal that that's the uh, new dollar amount. I think, I think I, that he said that uh, I knew Senator <laughs> King was going to be looking. So let's go big instead of small. So we're going after 195 million. Um, and we need to talk about who should go back. And I'm recommending from our team here is that it be uh, Commissioner Anderson, uh, Mayor McBride, uh, Mayor Marla Keither, myself, and someone from the port, either Kevin or uh, the deputy uh, uh, director. And it's the port Kennedy. has, yeah, the port has money to pay for this, for this trip. Um, and Kevin, do you wanna walk through the schedule? Well, I, I, I would like to, uh hand it over to Hal so he could talk Oh, he's on the bit. phone? Yeah, Hal, are you okay. there, Hal? Yeah, 
Yes, I am. I was muted. Sorry. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to visit with you. I see a lot of familiar faces and familiar names. Um, and I couldn't agree with Senator King more. Uh, 2026 sounds good. I'd like to see this bridge built before I retire. So that would be great. Okay, so 295 instead of 195. How? <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I'm delighted to hear that you're uh, interested in coming out to Washington. I think it's really important, um, all of our public clients that we work with, uh, those that show up are the ones that seem to get the attention. And so um, because Congress has been uh, working remotely for the last couple of years, for the most part, um, and just really beginning to open up now, um, we're seeing a lot more activity on Capitol Hill and a lot of individual constituents coming back in, so the timing's perfect. Um, I will say that it is a challenge to walk around Capitol Hill right now. Um, they only have one entrance and one exit to each congressional building, and you cannot get into a congressional building unless you're escorted by a congressional staff person. And so you see groups of people standing outside of congressional buildings waiting to find their escort so that they can be escorted into the congressional office that they're visiting, and then they have to be escorted around. So the whole process takes a lot longer than typically. And as you, um, uh, um, Kevin, have you shared the draft schedule with yes, folks? Yes, that is okay. included in your packet, but let me bring it up here on the screen. Okay. Um, so my recommendation is, and we talked about these dates, although they're pretty soft dates, if, if the other dates would work for you, uh, we could talk about that. But um, I recommended that we have a, one solid day on Capitol Hill and then another day where we're focusing on agencies and the agencies would be U.S. Department of Transportation meeting in the, um, with the Office of the Secretary to talk about the Infra Mega Rural Program uh, grant that is being uh, submitted on the 23rd of this month for $195 million. Um, they won't want to talk specifics because the, the application will be pending, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be promoting the project. And so we would go ahead and do everything we could to set up a meeting at USDOT. We'd also set up a meeting at USDOT in the Build America Bureau, which uh, is the bureau that focuses on TIFIA loans, and it's highly likely that this project um, would uh, look at TIFIA loan financing at some point for some portion of the bridge. And so that makes sense. The port has previously met with that office, so it's, but it's been a couple of years and we need to go back in and, and give them an update on where things are because they've advanced a lot. And then um, even though the Office of Rural Development at US Department of Agriculture is not likely to be a funding source for the bridge, they do make loans and they make loans for infrastructure type projects. And so we thought we would try to uh, visit with them as well. If you could go back a little bit, uh, Kevin, on the uh, congressional members. So we would like to set up meetings with congressmen, uh, with uh, Senators Wyden and Merkley, Senators Murray and Cantwell, and then for sure, uh, Congresswoman Herrera Butler um, and Cliff Benz. You know, it's a little awkward right now because Cliff Benz, of course, represents this project. But uh, with the realignment and redistricting, Earl Blumenauer will become the congressman for the area. And um, so we'll try to get meetings with both those offices. We'll see how they want to handle that because they're, they're kind of in a trade off, um, trading off uh, meetings at this point. Um, and Peter DeFazio, of course, is incredibly important to this effort because he's the chairman of the Transportation Committee, but he's also retiring from Congress. So we'll see how all those meetings come together. I will say that it's very ambitious to think that we could put together eight meetings in one day uh, for given how timely, how, how much time it takes to do a single meeting on Capitol Hill right now. So you all have to talk among yourselves, but if, if you could be in Washington for two and a half days, that would be better. If we only have two days to work with, then we might have to cut down the number of members of Congress that we meet with, because we do want to for sure have these agency meetings as well. But that's the general schedule. Um, I suggested that you would fly out 
on a Monday and then we'd have meetings on Tuesday and Wednesday and you could fly back on a direct flight from National Airport. The direct Alaska flight now leaves National Airport pretty late, so 6.55 p.m. So that gives us the opportunity to have a pretty solid day of meetings uh, on that second day. And, and we could conceivably have a meeting or two uh, in the morning with a member of Congress and then do the meetings a little later in the day with the agencies. But this is the general outline. We haven't begun to ask for meetings because we need to find out who's gonna be in the meetings. And uh, once you all have made that decision, then we can go ahead and launch requests for the meetings. But that's the general sense of where we are. We could also, if uh, flying on Tuesday and meetings on Wednesday, Thursday worked better, we could look at that. But uh, that week of July 18, I think works for Commissioner Fox, and so we started to build the schedule around that particular week. How, how does, uh, first off, let's talk about the, uh, the folks that could go. I know, Kate, I talked to you a little bit about this earlier. Would this work on your calendar? Yeah, it, it'll work with my calendar. And I could, you know, I can do the, the three days there, or I could go three and a half total if we needed to i don't have any meetings on the 21st right now okay. so uh, any any of those will work for me okay uh, commissioner anderson yeah um knowing how difficult it is to get in and get around and how long it could take uh we should also add in newhouse to that list uh because the switch is going to be the same thing with jamie herrera this is now going to be in newhouse's office so if we need to stay three days and fly out late that day, um, I would I would be all for that. Okay. Uh, how about uh, Marla? That week works well for me. So whatever the final determination is of you know uh, two and a half to three and a half days, I should be able to to do either. Okay. So and and I can do the three and a half days. The, the important thing to me is getting around and seeing all these people that we need to go see, uh, Al. So, you know, as you set it up, if we need to go to the three days, go to the three days. Um, hey, we see. will launch those requests early next week and uh, start to get a sense of, um, of what kind of response we're getting. and. If it looks like we're going to have to do the congressional meetings over a two day period with that third day uh, focused on the agencies, we should get a pretty good sense of that fairly soon. Okay. The congressional offices don't like to make commitments this far in advance. They like to do it only a few weeks in advance, but, and, and some of them, you know, depending on what's happening with COVID, currently Senator Cantwell's office is not meeting in person. They're only meeting on Zoom. So, you know, if that remains, uh, you know, we could take them out of this lineup because we can do a Zoom from where you're sitting. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do that in DC. So um, we'll launch our uh, initial request next week and then I'll just work with Kevin and keep you in the loop. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so we've got our team going back, um, and Hal's going to fine tune the uh, the agenda and keep us abreast, and and we're flexible on this schedule, so that's Perfect. good. Perfect. Okay, Kevin, could we go back to the agenda? Absolutely. Did you want me to touch base, uh, talk about the grant, uh, the grant application at this point? Yes. Yeah. Go finished. ahead. So. Uh, I would say that we, we are uh, producing this grant in, in uh, a fashion that I, I don't think I've ever seen before. <laughs> the, the deadline is the 23rd, but really it needs to be uh, submitted uh, this, you know, really about this time next Friday. So uh, we have uh, FCS group, uh, which is uh, producing the benefit cost analysis with updated information from the prior grant applications, both infra and the successful build grant. Uh, WSP is utilizing their uh, contingency contract and they will be uh, uh, having that done on a final draft due Thursday, May 19th. 
uh, and then we will have the final PDF. But really, next week is really going to be uh, for me to get letters, letters of uh, of support from each of your agencies, uh, from our federal delegation, Hal, um, our state uh, legislators uh, in both Oregon and Washington, in addition to private businesses on both sides of the river. Now, clearly after being at this for five years, we've got a pretty good list of people to go after and lots of models. Uh, I guess my question for Hal, considering that this is the largest request we will have have been making to date by many, many times. Uh, is there anything, can you just maybe summarize from your uh, position how some of the high points uh, that might be unique uh, to this position or the funding? Well, one of the things that we haven't been able to stress in previous grant applications is the level of commitment that uh, Washington State uh, the legislature and and to a certain extent Oregon State Legislature have contributed to the project so far and I think that this new um, funding that uh, was included in the state transportation package uh, on the Washington side allows us to go for this 195 million dollars without that we wouldn't have the match and then we wouldn't be a viable project uh, request. So with that matching uh, funding in place, um, I think we want to emphasize that. And we also want to emphasize the bi-state nature and uh, um, the, um, the fact that there's this bi-state coalition um, and is made up of elected officials and representatives from business interests and, and you know, a wide variety of folks. And that's going to, that's going to, uh, I think, uh, uh, gain, gain some attention when they start to review the proposal. I'm delighted to hear <clears throat> that it's being uh, professionally uh, written. I think that's really important. They'll pay a lot of attention to the cost benefit analysis. And so those are hard to put together. I'm glad to hear that it's being professionally uh, massaged at this point. Um, but uh, you know, the, the letters, I think, mostly just need to emphasize that there's a broad coalition of support and that there is local funding that is being put into the project. Good, thank you. Uh, I, I want to just acknowledge right now that that we were late getting this effort going. And I personally uh, want to thank WSP for stepping up and getting involved in this thing at the 11th hour and committing to get this thing done. It's a, it's a, a, a big effort. We got a lot of money riding at the stake here. Um, I personally appreciate them stepping up to the plate and helping us out here. So I don't know if they're on the, on the call here, but I just wanted everybody to. I do not, I see HNTV and I see uh, Excel Tech, but I do not see WSP on the line. Okay. Well, they're Kevin, busy writing the contract. proposal. Yeah, yeah, they're they're right. very busy right now. <laughs> so, Kevin, please convey our our appreciation to them when you when you talk to them. I, I will. Is is there any problem with any of the agencies that are on board about get? I know some agencies need to get uh, board approval, or uh, which could be, potentially be problematic. Uh, but um, when do you need it? Um, Kevin? Well, really, we probably need to get letters pulled together by next Thursday. So, uh, Kevin, uh, our county commission is meeting on Monday. So if you simply contact Heidi, uh, she'll squeeze an approval into our consent agenda. And we won't have a meeting before that. But um, I, I actually don't think it's going to be a problem. I mean, it's we've signed these letters before. <laughs> it's just for a, a different entity for a different amount of money. Um, and they've all been approved. So I can just announce at our next meeting that we um, that I signed it. So just go ahead and, and get it to Jennifer or, or Abigail. Got it. So Hal, with regards to the letters of support from the businesses, would it also be important from the businesses that are currently being uh, affected? Um, is he still there? Yes. Yes. Oh, yep. there. Okay. Uh, the businesses that are currently being affected by the, the load restrictions to, for them to, in their letter of support and rationale, 
to say, you know, this is this is my impact. This is this functionally obsolete bridge. It's completely shut off my business. Absolutely. No, that would be great because um, one of the primary purposes, um, the infra grant that we're applying for, and it's a, a, a grant round that U, USDOT combined the infra grant program, the mega grant program, which is for really big projects like this one, and the rural program, and you qualify under all of those. But um, the infra program in, in particular is focused on freight movement. So if, um, if any businesses can say, my business is being adversely affected because of weight restrictions or the fact that the, river, the bridge is just so functionally obsolete, um, I think that that's a really important point to emphasize. And Kevin, are you going to be able to draft up a draft letter of support that you can get to us so that I can go out and start marking this and, and getting signatures from all these companies? Absolutely. My, uh, my job this weekend is to uh, draft uh, letters for uh, as many different, uh, I guess, <clears throat> perspectives. And then I'll, I'll kind of give everybody a suite of letters that, and then they can kind of pick the ones that best suit uh, whoever it is you're talking to. Kevin, we appreciate you doing that over the weekend. Uh, we, we all know that this is a on your market set, we're late. Uh, so we appreciate the effort. And, and Kevin, uh, in terms of uh, along the lines of what Jake was suggesting for letters, uh, Bob Benton has personally described uh, his hardship in, uh, in running his business with the bridge as with the rate, weight restrictions. And I'm sure you can get Ed Weathers, who's the president of Duckwall, uh, fruit to uh, to sign a letter along those lines. Yeah, we've got a number of uh, people that are have been acknowledged and and are on record that have got financial challenges because of the bridge restriction. So we'll reach out to them. Yeah, you, you know, if you, it might be helpful if you have contacts that you've um, asked in the past, maybe just to give them a heads up today that a letter is forthcoming, just so that they aren't surprised when it when it comes. Yeah, Arthur, Arthur, maybe you and I work this side of the river with Kate. Um, sure. And, and I've got a list. I'm sure both of you have a list as well. It's pretty easy. Yep. Yep. Okay. I've, I've got a, I'm talking to Jessica um, Meta from uh, Mid Columbia Economic Development on Saturday. And I'll ask her if she uh, knows of specific people also through okay. McKed. Excellent. Okay. Hey, we'll, 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 we're going to do our best. We're going to get this thing out for sure. Cross your fingers and uh, I'll be in touch as far as uh, letters and such. Uh, okay. That's all I have, unless there's any other questions about the uh, process or the application. I, I, it's due, uh, well, the, uh, we will hear back how uh, before the election is typical, before the Election. That would be my guess. There's um, with the deadline of May 23rd. I'm sure the administration is targeting to make initial grant recipient announcements by, you know, September October because they want to try to get some mileage out of them. So, yeah. Yeah. And okay. how is it your experience? From our going back there in July, would that have any potential material impact on success? Um, I think it could because it it won't influence the folks we meet at USDOT so much. But if we say to all the congressional offices, who hopefully will have written, certainly the senators and um, and Herrera Butler and Ben's letters of support, um, there's you know, in a lot of ways, USDOT uh, looks at an application and looks at whether or not congressional members have sent in their letters of support. And if they have, that kind of checks that box. But there's sending in letters and then there's making phone calls. And I think our objective is to encourage all of the uh, members of Congress to really um, turn up the heat on USDOT and call in the, to the secretary's office and say, this one is really important. And if we can get that whole list of eight or nine members of Congress calling in and saying, this one we want you to take seriously, 
um, that could have a real impact because then the secretary is going to call down to his lower level people and say, you know, take a, you know, give this one a second thought. Excellent. Okay, let's go back to the agenda. Thank you, Hal. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Hal. You're going to bring the agenda up? Yeah, <laughs> I've got so many different files up right now. I'm just trying to get to the get to the right one here. Give me just a quick sec. Okay. Can you see that uh, draft agenda? Uh, bring it up for full screen. Is that a little better? Let's see. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's talk briefly about the management contract. Yeah, great, that's good. Uh, we've completed, the evaluation team has completed uh, uh, the review of both the written proposals and gone through the oral proposals. We have made a recommendation of it as the team and we've discussed that recommendation with the Bi-State Working Group. The next step, as we're taking that recommendation to the port, the port meeting is on Tuesday. And at that time, uh, the port will have the recommendation of both the, the uh, review team, the Bi-State Working Group as a team, and they're the, the last ones on the chain to make the final approval to uh, share the intent to award and move into negotiation of uh, with the selected bidder. I can tell you all the bidders worked really hard. All of them uh, were extremely professional. There's good people on all of the teams. Um, but the evaluation team did make a selection and the bi-state group has uh, agreed with that selection. So I'm not gonna announce it today. It, it's really up to the bi or the uh, port commission to make the final decision. And then I believe Kevin, the schedule is, you're gonna make a phone call on Wednesday. I'm gonna make a phone call on Wednesday. And, and then there's an expectation that we move in an accelerated manner to see if we can't reach agreement on, on uh, the costs associated with the contract and, and get it in place and get going. You all heard uh, Senator King, if anything, uh, it accelerates you know, what we're talking about. And, and I'd love to be able to be you know, done with the bridge by 2026. Um, but this is one of the, the key steps going forward. The, uh, Committee members were myself, Arthur Babbitts from uh, Hood River County, Gordy Kelsley, Kelsey from Clickitat County, Sam Hunaday, ODOT, Holly Winston from ODOT, um, Scott Langer from Washington DOT was originally part of the team, but he had to uh, uh, back out because of uh, family issues uh, that he just couldn't participate. But I'll tell you, the team worked very well together. Uh, they probably put in just looking at the proposal, just the proposal itself and scoring the proposal was about 24 to 26 hours each. And then, then a significant amount uh, going through the orals and, and the oral scoring as well. So the, the team took their time. Nobody was pressured to uh, come up with uh, uh, a collective winner. Everybody got their chance to formulate their opinion and present their opinion. We had some great discussions about it. And then at the end of the day, uh, we were all totally in agreement with the selection. So we feel very good that, that the team we selected is the right team to take on this challenge. And it's gonna be a challenge. It, as you heard Senator King, it's not gonna be go slow, it's gonna be go fast and then faster and faster after that as, as we possibly can. So that's what I wanted to say about uh, the evaluation, Arthur, or 
or Gordy, do you have anything you want to add? Nope, that's a good description. I think probably the least said, the better. Yep. Okay, so we've got a no negotiating schedule. It's up on the screen right now. We uh, uh, get port authorization on Tuesday, May 17th. Send out the notice of intent on Wednesday. Uh, there's a quiet period. The first negotiation meeting we would like to have this coming Thursday, May the 19th. Uh, the the uh, we've got an independent contractor working for us to look at the work plan. Will we be giving the contractor the the template on the nineteenth to fill out? We want that back. Uh, it's on the schedule here somewhere. Uh, so we have time. I guess May the twenty fifth, June first. We'll have our second negotiating meeting. Uh, the third meeting is on Monday the 6th, and we hope by that time we've got agreement between ourselves and the selected bidder. Then the documents go into legal uh, review and then submittal into ODOT and the Federal Highway Administration for final approval. We would like to finalize the contract July the 6th. Uh, we take it to the commission in the by state on July the 12th. We give the full notice to proceed on July the 13th. Uh, and and uh, the quiet period concludes July the 19th. And, and we're rocking and rolling. So it's a very aggressive schedule. Uh, so the selected bidder, we hope, is going to be ready to jump in and conclude this uh, this contract and, and get on with it. So that's her plan. Commissioner Fox, if I may. Yeah. I would like to thank all of the people that were on the committee. I think you did a wonderful job. And with that, I would move that we forward the committee's recommendation to the Port Commission for a decision. Can we have a, uh, let's say a second. Okay, Mayor Kate. I'll second that. Okay, and let's do a quick vote. Thumbs up for yes. Aye. Okay. One, two, three, four. Marla? Yes, aye. Okay, so we will go ahead and proceed and, and bring that forward to the port. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Okay, so let's go back to the agenda. Okay, project updates. Uh, uh, Arthur, did Bob say anything about you know his effort with uh, Mr. Siegel on governance for the Bi-State Bridge Authority? Um, you know, he, he told me a little bit about their meeting, but it wasn't the form of a report that I would share. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, no, he didn't. He didn't have anything specific for me to report. Okay. It sounded like they had a good productive meeting. I just don't know. Um, I, I don't know what of that, you know, all this detail he told me about, I don't know what of that is relevant to pass along. Okay. And, and uh, Kevin, uh, Mr. Siegel's not on the, on the call, is he? No, no, he, he was, okay. but then uh, he, he dropped off. I, okay. I, can, I, I mean, I can get uh, That's all right. That's okay. all right. Let's, let's allow him and Bob to come up with a, a status for our next meeting. Their, their next meeting is, I want to say, next Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Um, is there any other open items that anyone would like to bring up in the session here? Okay. Kate, no. Uh, Jake, you're okay? No. Okay. Arthur? No, I'm good. Okay, Marla. I'm good as well. Okay, and some of the others that are on, uh, 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 Christy Chapman. I'm good. The only thing I would like to say is um, being the last commissioner that went to DC um, with uh, Commissioner Souter, um, you guys are gonna have fun. <laughs> 
Yeah, but we want to make sure we're bringing back a, a boatload of money with us. That's that'll be really yes, fun. Yes, that's good. Yeah. And wear very comfortable shoes because it is an insane amount of walking. Yeah, and I'll tell you, um, you know, I, I was in D.C. in March, and it was very nice to be there in March. I don't envy you going in July. Yeah. Yeah, I used to live out there, so get ready for humidity. Okay, any other items? We're, we're good to go. The next meeting is June, uh, what was it, Kevin? 20? Uh, June, June 20th. Okay, June 20th, unless we need to, to gather everybody real quick. And we'll try and do that uh, if we need to in short order. Yeah, I actually had an observation considering the, considering the schedule that you presented a couple of minutes ago. There were several, uh, there's at least one place where we're waiting like five or six days until we got around to a Tuesday meeting for us. Um, and I just wanted to state that I'm certainly available for emergency meetings, uh, you know, any day of the week. Uh, if we simply need to uh, to endorse or ratify something and maybe get a few days ahead of schedule. Yeah, what this schedule shows that we were going to have a joint meeting with uh, the port commission and we we tied it to the normal port commission date. If we're ready several days ahead of that, I'm absolutely fine uh calling a special meeting with the port and accelerate that date so we can push on yeah i just hate these things where you have day after day where it's like well we can only do this because they have a meeting scheduled then yeah. or whatever it's like this is important we can schedule special meetings we all have the ability within 24 or 48 hours of notice to have a meeting uh let's take advantage of that we're not doing something difficult or controversial yeah and and for me tuesdays are always my worst day because that's my commissioner day so okay Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Any other final comments before we adjourn? Have a good weekend, everybody. Okay, guys, we're done. Thank you so much. Happy Friday the 13th. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> about that. I didn't. <laughs> That's bye right, bye. You, you, you left your keys in your car for that. <laughs> yeah.